Tensions between Somalia and Ethiopia escalated over the weekend following allegations by Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed that Ethiopian security forces tried to bar him from attending the African Union summit in Addis Ababa. The incident comes amid an ongoing dispute between the two countries involving the breakaway region of Somaliland. Ahmed Mohammed reports from Mogadishu. Speaking to journalists before cutting short his trip, Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed said the actions of the Ethiopian forces were part of a grand scheme by the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to annex part of Somalia. This morning when I prepared myself to attend the closed session of the summit, the Ethiopian security has blocked my way. They refused me to come out of the hotel and go on with my cars and entourage. The actions of Ethiopia as of today is to annex part of Somalia to Ethiopia and to disrespect the African Union summit participants are uh, me. The Somali president eventually gained access to the meeting, entering with the security team of the Djibouti president, Ismail Omar Gele. The Ethiopian government has rejected Mahmoud's claim and said the Somali leader and his delegation declined to be accompanied by a security detail assigned to him. Matt Bryden, co-founder of Sahan Research, a policy and security think tank thinks it's not easy to apportion blame because there would have been a breakdown in security protocol. Either the Ethiopians unreasonably denied access to the president and his security detail uh, or the Somali security uh, personnel escorting the president were trying to bring weapons into a location into which they were not permitted. The claims by Mohammed escalated tensions that are already running high because of an agreement signed New Year's Day between Abiy and Somaliland's president, Musa Bihi. The Memorandum of Understanding would grant landlocked Ethiopia access to the Gulf of Aden to build a naval base. In exchange, according to Somaliland, Ethiopia would recognize it as an independent state. Ethiopia, however, said it would merely consider that possibility. Somalia, which is still considered Somaliland part of its territory, is insisting the agreement be cancelled. The African Union has called for dialogue to solve the issue, but a former Somali government minister, Abdullahi Godahbare, says that is not possible right now. Uh, Barre says the negotiation called by the African Union is not good at this stage. He says dialogue is always good, but Ethiopia has to retract the deal so that the dialogue will be without conditions. No one, he says, will accept negotiations based on annexation. Ethiopia has not explicitly rejected Somalia's annexation claim, but Abi said this month that Ethiopia does not wish to harm Somalia. According to Bryden, the issue is complicated by Somalia's dependence on Ethiopian troops for security in southwestern parts of the country. Somalia has still not called for Ethiopian troops to leave southwestern Somalia, which would be disastrous because presumably places like Belatwain, Bulaburti, Baidoa and other towns would fall into the hands of al-Shabaab if Ethiopia were to do so. Ethiopia and Somalia have long history of tensions and have even gone to war with each other. However, in recent years, the two countries have enjoyed relatively friendly relations. Ethiopia currently deploys its troops into Somalia within and outside the African Union framework. Ahmed Mohammed for VOA News, Mogadishu, Somalia. Guinea's military junta on Thursday dissolved its government with no indication when a new government would be announced. Reuters quotes the Secretary General of the Presidency as saying directors of cabinet and the Secretary Generals and their deputies will be in charge until a new government is appointed. Reporter Karim Kamara in Konakri tells me the junta has also ordered all sacked ministers to turn in their government issue vehicles and banks to block their accounts. The military they didn't say anything concerning the reasons behind the dissolution of um, the government this evening. But it's like that um, they seem to have had enough of um, the civilian government because um, the government was led by a civilian, Bernard Gomu. And then um, they have been tainted with a lot of accusations of widespread corruption, bad governance, human rights abuses, and all the rest. So uh, it's like that they have had enough. But um, people are also waiting to get full explanation from the government because um, the way um, the government was sent out 
is quite unusual in Guinea. What do we know about the Prime Minister? What is his status now? Well, uh, Bernard Gumu is now an ordinary man as any Guinean. He was a Prime Minister before he was a Minister of Commerce, before he became an interim Prime Minister and then became a Prime Minister. Now he has left, he has become an ordinary Guinean, like any other Guinean on the street. So what now will lie on him is what he did when he was a Prime Minister, whether he worked well to satisfy Guineans, whether he was able to meet the needs you know, of Guineans, whether he was able to at least to meet the expectations of Guineans. This is what there will be the aftermath and uh, all things that will follow him after today. Do we have a new government in place? Mm, well, not yet. Nobody has been appointed as prime minister or a member of government. But from what we heard from the communique uh, is that all permanent secretaries will, as from tomorrow, act as interim ministers in the department until the government is appointed. So that is what we had in the communique. Sorry, we had in the communique and read by the secretary to the president, General Amara Kamara. Rwanda says the ongoing war in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo is becoming a national security threat in Kigali, confirming its fears of a possible regional conflict. Rwanda's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said on Sunday the war means Kinshasa has specifically abandoned regional efforts at Darug. The statement issued on Friday on February 18th follows another communique from the U.S. State Department which called on Rwanda to withdraw its troops from the DRC. However, Rwanda is deeply concerned by the abandonment of the Rwanda and Nairobi processes by the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo and by the international community's indifference to DRC's dramatic military buildup. DRC has launched massive combat operations in North Kivu. In contravention of the decisions of the regional mechanism and clearly aims to expel M23 and Congolese Tutsi civilians into neighboring countries, Kigali said. Officially, Kigali repeated its past allegation that Kinshasa was working with the democratic forces for the liberation of Rwanda FDRL, a Rwandan ethnic militia which is directly linked to the genocide against the Tutsi in the Rwanda in 1994. The recent M23 advances condemned by the US and Kinshasa in particular are due to the DRS's decision to expel the East African Community Regional Force in December 2023, which oversaw ceasefire and withdrawal efforts. Rwanda urged, referring to the de facto EAC force, which deployed between November 2023, 2022 and December 2023. In November 2023, following American mediation between the DRC and Rwanda, the Congolese army forbade Congolese soldiers to have any contact with the FDRL. The Rwandan authorities claim that the FDRL have been integrated into the Congolese army anywhere and urge that Congolese authorities are not protecting the Tutsi communities in the DRC who are, according to Rwanda, victims of hate speech and discrimination. Taken together, these facts represent a serious threat to Rwanda's national security. But Congolese authorities say Rwanda cannot take on the role of protecting citizens of another country. Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi spoke about this to counterparts to the talks held on the sidelines of the 37 African Union summit last weekend. The question of refugees from the two countries has always been one of the points of contention between Rwanda and DRC. In May 2023, Kigali and Kishasa undertook at the end of a meeting held in Geneva to enter into a constructive dialogue to create conditions conducive to the sustainable return of Congolese and Rwandan refugees to their respective countries. No significant process has been made since then. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.